In Cubase, there are three different track types that can use MIDI, and let's go over all three of them. First, there are obviously MIDI tracks, and then there are instrument tracks, and finally, sampler tracks. Now, the big difference between these three track types are the destinations of the data that you're recording onto the associated tracks. For example, MIDI track destinations are assignable to external MIDI ports, including USB connections between USB-equipped MIDI devices, and or VST instruments. And VST instruments are synonymous with virtual instruments, or the instruments that are being created inside of Cubase. Now, in the case of instrument tracks, their destinations are assignable only to those VST instruments. And in the case of sampler tracks, the destinations are assignable only to itself. In other words, the sampler track itself. So before you start recording MIDI and adding an associated track, you have to think about where you're going to send that data or the destination. So let's see how to assign those destinations on each of those tracks. Let's add one MIDI track to our project. There's a number of different ways to do that. I'm going to right or control click in the track list and then choose add MIDI track. And you can give it a name. In fact, I encourage you to give it a name because it'll make it a lot easier to find the tracks if you give them a unique name. But if you leave the name field blank and then just click add track, then it's going to name the track just the default of MIDI 01. So this MIDI track could be sent to either an internal virtual instrument or out of a USB port or MIDI output port. But how do we assign that destination? Well, we come over here to the inspector, make sure that you're on the first tab of the inspector, and then come down to the output assignment. This is the destination of the MIDI data that you're going to be recording. So if you click on that, then you'll be able to see all the MIDI output devices that you have connected to your computer. In my case, I have several because I have several different USB MIDI devices. But I'm going to leave it clicked on my USB MIDI keyboard, which is called the laboratory. And that way, when I record the data, that data will then be sent to my external keyboard. However, my keyboard doesn't have its own built-in sounds. If I instead had an external synthesizer connected to my keyboard's MIDI output, then this will be recording the data and sending it to that external MIDI device. So right now, if I were to record some MIDI data onto that track, I don't hear anything because the destination that I'm sending that MIDI data doesn't actually have a sound source connected to it. But it's different for instrument tracks because instrument tracks have a synthesizer built into Cubase that they're using. So now let's add an instrument track and you'll see that the add instrument track dialog box appears much different. Let's right or control click in the track column and choose add instrument track. And you can see that each track type has its own different icon that corresponds to the icon of the track after you've added it to your project. So in the case of MIDI tracks, they have a little five pin DIN connector icon. So if we look at the MIDI track that we created, we also see that little MIDI icon. In the case of instrument tracks, they have a little keyboard icon. And now the add track dialog box is different because it shows us that we're adding an instrument track and we get to choose which internal VST instrument we want to use to generate the sound. In other words, the destination of this instrument track. So let's click on that drop down box and I have a whole bunch of third party plugins installed in my computer, but let's go with the one that comes with Cubase called Halion Sonic SE. And then I'll want to choose a stereo output so that we get the rich stereo field of the instruments contained within Halion Sonic SE. And then you can choose how many tracks you want to create. I'm just going to create one, then click Add Track. And now we're going to see the control panel for that instrument track. This is Halion Sonic SE version 3. And if I assign a sound to slot number 1, Let's go with a, uh, an organ sound here and electric, and let's go with fifth percussive organ. 
That's going to load that sound into the first slot, which corresponds with the instrument tracks MIDI channel assignment. So in this case, channel number one on this instrument track will control part number one or slot number one of the associated VST instrument. Not all VST instruments have the ability to play multiple sounds, but Halion Sonic SE3 definitely does. So now if I were to play some notes on my MIDI keyboard, I'd hear that associated sound. If you don't hear the sound, make sure that the track that you have added has the record enabled on the track. And then if we were to record some MIDI data onto that track, we'd be able to hear it. But let's go back to MIDI tracks quickly because MIDI tracks, as you'll remember, can address both external MIDI devices and VST instruments. So if we were to add another MIDI track to our project, and I'll just leave the name blank and click add track. Now we have MIDI track number two, but let's change its destination to one of the built-in synthesizers that we already have loaded into Cubase. In this case, we have Halion Sonic SE right here. I'm going to change its MIDI channel to channel number two, and then assign a new instrument to part number two, which is on channel two, and this time, let's go to Strings and Section, and we'll just go with the backing section right here. So now, this newly created MIDI track is talking to the same virtual instrument that our instrument track is talking to. The difference is that they're on different MIDI channels, even though they have the same destination. So now, when I record MIDI, I'll be able to hear that string section. And in the case of sampler tracks, let's come over to our media tab and then go into loops and samples and look in the kaleidoscope library. And then I've already pre-selected pad 05 with a root key of C3. And I'm going to add that to our sampler tab. And if you don't see this bottom zone or the lower zone, make sure that you click the little window controller right here to reveal it. Then click on the sampler control. Normally you'd see the mix console, but this time we're going to click on the sampler control tab. And now I can click and drag that sample onto the sampler control window. And you'll notice that it automatically created a sampler track for me. And unlike MIDI and instrument tracks, it has no destination to assign because it is pre-assigned by having its own sampler control window per sampler track. And now when I play my MIDI keyboard, I'll hear that sample. So those are the three types of tracks that can use MIDI. And next, let's talk about using external MIDI devices.